Hi everyone, this is Kenzie. You know when a game comes out that you only hear is bad for either unknown reasons or very, very well-known reasons? For me, that game was New Gundam Breaker. I have always known about the popularity of Gunpla and how seriously people took it, but I never took the time to build my own. I was perfectly comfortable just looking at Gunpla on display in stores. I was a simple kid back then. I was also a fan of the Dynasty Warriors Gundam series because instead of focusing on the realism of actually piloting these heavy ass suits like the Mobile Suit Gundam games, the Warriors games focused on giving you all of these Gundam's cool moves and let you slash your way through thousands of mass produced suits while being light as a feather. New Gundam Breaker seemed like, to me, having no knowledge of the Gundam Breaker series prior, the chance to have that same Dynasty Warriors experience, but with more realistic Gundam elements from the other games. Normally, I would have gone ahead and purchased it. I didn't, but I was always looking out for it. Over time, however, I noticed something about the game. The price kept dropping and dropping and dropping and dropping. Oh look, it's 15 bucks. And that made me look up reviews. And every review basically said the same thing at the time of release. The game is mediocre, has a mountainside worth of technical issues, and is overall just the worst way to localize the series, and is an even worse follow-up to a game called Gundam Breaker 3. So here we are today. Not only do I have a heavily patched version of New Gundam Breaker, but I also have Gundam Breaker 3 imported straight from Asia, so I will be reviewing both of them. Gundam Breaker 3's video will be more of a comparison to New Gundam Breaker, while New Gundam Breaker will be the benchmark for Gundam Breaker 3. Okay, I said enough, let's get to the breaking. This is my review on New Gundam Breaker. Yeah, those reviews are right. Well, mostly. Let me just start out by saying that this game is a mess of unrefined combat and just weird design decisions, but the game ran fine. No matter what I was doing in the game, the patches must have helped because I was not only running at a smooth frame rate, but I was able to hit 60 FPS on PS4 Pro at times. The game had frame rate drops and literal hitches, but overall the game played well enough for me to focus on its problems that it can't just patch under the rug. But for now, let's start with the good. The game looks excellent. The game took the more toy-like route with the graphics. I feel like I could reach into the TV and grab one of those models and it would look the exact same in the real world. Your gun plus sits on your desk in the main menu and it can be posed in many ways in the photo mode. The environments also look great, especially the map where it looks like the lobby to an office or something. It's so cute how everything is so big around us, it's like children's toy warfare and it looks adorable. The looks also go hand in hand with the customization of your gunpla, and if you are thinking about getting this game, this should be the reason why. The customization is so flexible, and a new feature for this game was being able to loosely customize the inner frame of your gunpla, which apparently was new for the series. The colors of every single piece you collect can be changed to your color value of choice. Your colors can be as metallic or as glossy as you want, and there are even presets that let you pick a paint job to save you the trouble of crafting a great color scheme. The promise of customizing the gunpla of your dreams is definitely possible, and as a result I feel like I can recommend this gunpla customization tool to any gunpla fanatics out there. Unless you have access to the Japan Only series, which I hear is amazing, but we'll get to that in the next video. And now for the bad, cause this list is gonna be pretty hefty. On the dark side of assembling your Gundam, if you don't want to grind for parts that is, you can choose to buy the parts yourself, and each single part, whether it is small scale or big scale, which is 144 scale, or 1 100 scale, is a whopping 100,000 Gundam points. A hundred grand! This wouldn't suck so hard if it weren't for the fact that you barely get money after missions. Depending on the amount of duplicate parts you get during the mission, you can sell those dupes for Gundam points at the results screen, and you will almost never reach a decent amount. It is reasonable to say that you will never reach the amount to buy every part in the game, so you will be grinding off of missions hoping you'll get the parts that you want. Each part also comes with its own stats, which makes building the Gundam of your dreams kinda difficult. You either build the kit you want and have mediocre stats potentially, or you min-max and you have a monstrosity of a creation. The parts you get are also randomized because no matter what mission you play, the mission will spawn randomized gunpla, which means that when you're looking for a specific part, you'll just have to get lucky and hope you aren't wasting your time. 
From the moment you spawn in, your first responsibility in any typical mission is to break open crates and get experience to level up your gunpla for the mission to gain access to your skills. Think of it as creep farming in MOBAs. This system works okay for this game, even though the experience takes a while to come to your gunpla. But it gets pretty annoying when you're fighting enemies and the lock-on system immediately shoots to a crate somewhere on your far left. Oh yeah, the lock-on sucks. Lock-on is done by aiming your camera, and the lock-on space will attach heavily to a single target. In a one-on-one -on -one battle, this would be fine, but you are constantly fighting upwards of 10 to 20 units at a time, so you will be struggling to lock on to the unit you want to kill, but your lock-on cursor will fuck off to the mobile armor that is over yonder. Not to mention that the lock-on camera makes fighting up against objects in the battlefield a headache. The fighting itself feels cheaply made, impact on hits is lacking, and worst of all, the reason for this lackluster carnage is stupid as hell too. The story is set up in missions where at first you'll be going solo, and after these missions you'll be choosing between characters to go on missions with, and their missions lead to other missions with that same character. The difference in characters only applies to the story itself, which takes place in... Gun Bray High? Okay, so in Gundam Breaker High, there are two sides. Everyone who can build Gunpla and the Rejects. And naturally, you and three other girls are the Reject. One girl is your typical valedictorian type who's perfect at everything, but she's not on the side with the perfect people. Another girl is your typical Hinata Huga type. And the other one is... <laughs> <laughs> Bat shit insane. The motivations are paper thin and only serve to get you controlling your gun plot faster. Skipping cutscenes will allow you to miss nothing. Overall, the story is a reason to play and nothing else. Maybe you'll attach to the characters, but if you don't, oopsie doopsie, guess the story is fucking useless. <sighs> But aside from that, I had a bunch of fun with the game. There's a certain satisfaction to building a Gunpla and taking it for a spin, seeing how much attack power they have and how fast you can clear a wave of enemies, provided that wave of enemies doesn't just decide to gangbang you and wipe your health in one go. It's fun. And the degree of customization only makes that better, if only the rest of this game followed suit. Yes, the game has been patched a bunch, but at the same time, these problems will most likely stay with the game forever. I don't think the game is unsalvageable garbage like a few people think, but it's fun and that's about it. I can't wait to see how Gundam Breaker 3 treats me though, because unlike this video, Gundam Breaker 3 will be done from a blind and review perspective all in one go, so it'll most likely be compared to new Gundam Breaker. But till then, this has been Kinsey, and I'll see you guys next time. And sorry for the long wait, for those of you who still watch me, I'll try to be more consistent. Don't worry, we're still here, peace and savvy.